Welcome to TechWizard with Amiru. In this video, we are going to learn how to use O Data Connector in Azure Data Factory to get some data. So first of all, we need some website which provide that data, right? So maybe you have connected with your, I don't know, there could be third party companies or they will be providing you some data or maybe your own company has set up the data that you can use in a different processes. So here is one of the odata.org that provides some sample data and all that and I'm going to use that for our demo. So uh, look at here what we have. Uh, so this is uh, our uh, HTTP link, uh, and uh, then uh, there is uh, some uh, people uh, entity that uh, can give us uh, data about the people. So uh, let me take this and provide right there, and uh, you can see all the JSON data is right there. So you see right there, odata.context content context. Okay, <laughs> pretty hard to say that. But anyways, uh, well, you have a first name, last name and all those information. So think about that if you would like to get all the data from uh, uh, for the people uh, you can use this. So, so there are multiple ways uh, in Azure Data Factory we can extract this data. So first of all, we would like to go to the Azure Data Factory and here we will be creating our uh, pipeline. So let me go right there, create a pipeline. And uh, before we even work with the pipeline, you guys know that we need uh, the linked service. So I can start with the copy activity because once you start extracting the data, uh, it's going to ask you, you need to create the linked service. So when then we will create that, go to source here and add a new and type O data. Once you type over data, it is going to show you the connector and uh, then you're going to hit the next and uh, here create uh, a new link service. Uh, now we will provide the service URL. If you guys remember that this is the URL I was opening. Um, so see, this is entity. So I don't need to use that because uh, there could be multiple entities and uh, I might uh, would like to get the data from there. So I'm going to delete that part and just leave this uh, part uh, that we would like to use. Uh, so now we have a different type of authentication. So you have basic authentication where username, passwords, and all those can be provided. You have, uh, let's say, if the company has provided this information, you can provide. In my case, they had not provided anything. And then you have a Windows authentication, anonymous, and AAD service principle key, and AAD service service principle with certificate. So it depends upon so many different authentication depend from which company you are getting the data and what type of authentication uh, they want. And so if they have provided you this link, you can always ask them, hey, which authentication I need to use? And if they tell you like, okay, you will be using a Windows or a AAD or a, a, a service principle and all that you have to set up. In my case, it's going to be anonymous. So, so I'm going to click right there, test my connection, and I should be just fine. So I can call this odata2 is fine, create. And now once I created that, uh, here is the, in the path uh, under that, uh, it has given me the list of entities available for me under that uh, link. Uh, so airlines, airports, uh, uh, people. So let's go with the people first. And uh, uh, or, uh, yeah, that's fine. We can go with the people right now. And here what we have, we can preview the data. So it's uh, gonna show us uh, all that you have user, first name, last name, and all uh, different uh, columns available for you. Now we would like to write this data to the some file. I'm going to go to sync here, go to new, and Azure Blob Storage is just fine. I'm going to go CSV file, and then we will be creating a linked service. Click on new, and here we will provide our subscription, and then we will provide our storage account. Now this is fine. Hit create. And uh, now we will be providing a container in which we would like to create that file. So here is input container. And I'm going to hit, uh, yes, first row has column header. And uh, provide the file name. We will do that later. And here open it. And uh, right now provide the file name. So I'm going to say o data output.txt. And uh, that should do it. And now what we will do, we will go back to our pipeline. And we will execute our pipeline now. So now debug, and it should read the data from uh, those uh, people's entity from the odata website that we have provided and uh, read, write the data to the CSV file. So it is uh, telling us uh, HTTP request time out five minutes. Uh, uh, if you want to increase or all that, you know, you can do that. In my case, I'm just fine with that. And you can see the data. There are 20 rows uh, written. Uh, so that's good. We can go back to our file here and uh, take a look. Uh, so go to the tech browser storage, go to container here, and in the container we have input uh, 
uh, container right there or data output file is sitting right there. So you see that for username, first name, last name and all that and then we have all that uh, data sitting right there. Okay, great. Now this is a, this was very normal and uh, easy task and uh, now let's go a little bit more details. So here I would like to show you guys if uh, you want to write some query. In this case we were uh, getting the entire data. So now if I would like to change the data to the query, I would, would like to filter some data that I can do that. In this case, uh, let me see if I can find some uh, example here. So control F and the, uh, try to find uh, this uh, select. So in this case, uh, if you see right there, this is gonna filter on collection. So in my case, uh, if I would like to filter when name is equal to iCADO code, something like that. So if I would like to do that, so I can, now in this case, uh, I'm uh, using airport. So, and then I can use a query here. So I'm gonna copy this guy and what you will do you go back to the old data here we open the connection and we will do airports um, in the airports is fine now we go back here and go to the query right there and we will paste there okay and you will put double quotes around it uh, so you see dollar sign select name is equal to comma that's value so that's what you are providing if i will take that value as it is and just provide you here so you can copy this and open in this uh, window here. So you see right there, that's where we are looking for. Uh, so name right there. So that's where we name and we are filtering on this one. Okay, so that's fine. We can filter the same way in our uh, your data factory. So right there, you can always write to uh, add dynamic contents uh, if you want to, but I'm fine with this. Um, so it's gonna get some, get some uh, records and just uh, filter according to the values. Uh, Yep, so it got only five records for us now, okay? That works just fine, and now we can go and take a look on the file. It should have all those records there. Refresh, and we can see what we have there. So you guys see right there. These are the only five records where this code is, a name is equal to this code, okay? So that works just fine. Now what we need to do here, we need to go further and take a look. Here, these are, if you guys notice that, requesting data you can use get 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 to get and all that and then there are tons of other things that like you want to filter on location you want to filter on value and all those you can do that also you can query data system query options by using dot dollar sign filter and uh, there is uh, also you can do other uh, uh, tasks such as uh, here you are getting but you can also do different such as a put and patch and all that you know so you can delete and everything you can do that right there okay by using a uh, or data so that's a possibility now in this case uh, what we had been using we had been using copy activity right uh, and uh, now we are going to delete the copy activity or we can do another one actually uh, let's uh, create a new pipeline and this pipeline will be using web activity to extract the data so now I'm going to go and say web and here in the web I will go to settings and here I have to provide the link. So here notice that if I would like to select the data for all of these guys for entire people so I can do that. So what I'm going to do here I'm going to paste the link right there and in the select API method I'm going to go get. Now if I execute this web activity what's going to happen is they're going to grab all the data so if i go in the output you can see right there so username first name last name and if i expand this you can see that it has the entire data set or payload in the json form and now i can use this wherever i need to use that also if i want to filter that that's very easy so now you see that any of these get with all those filters queries and everything i can use it so simply if I have to use this one, that's going to return me some values. I can take this and just paste it there. So this is the most easy part, uh, you know, and uh, very easy to use. And, uh, you know, you can filter tons of information that you do not need and only extract to what you need. So in this case, remember that we were only filtering for some data and uh, now we have only data for uh, just this guy, right? So you see right there, that's the data we have. Now out of this, uh, we can always say output dot value or dot uh, username first name last name and all that and we can set to different variables or we can write to the file or whatever we would like to do we can use it there are some other scenarios or uh, uh, 
uh, I have uh, different web uh, actually videos where I took the payload of this web activity and then written to the blob story. That's possible. So that's not uh, going to be a big deal. You can also use a web activity actually here to write to the blob storage. So watch another video that I have in the playlist. So, so I hope uh, this uh, getting the data from OData uh, and uh, you learn how to use OData connector, how to uh, connect to the OData websites by using HTTP and uh, by using different function methods such as get and all that. And as I said that you can also use the patch and delete and whatever it needed to be done if you have required permission and you are able to make the connection by using a specific authentications. In this case I was using just no authentication really because it was it is for the read only purpose and I can use an anonymous. Here again if you want to use web activity, in the web activity you have all different type of options for authentication. You have a basic where and then you have a managed identity, client certificate, service principle, user assigned managed identity preview. So you have a different options to connect to the uh, website and uh, perform actions. Thank you very much for watching. Please uh, subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys in the next video.